All attendees are in listen only mode. Uh, hi, good afternoon and a warm welcome to all. Uh, I very sincerely uh, regret for the delay uh, due to some technical glitch over here. Uh, uh, I'm Rizal on behalf of K Ratings. Uh, welcome you to our today's webinar on Indian banking system liquidity. Our speakers for today would be uh, Kavita Chako, senior economist, and uh, along with her, Sushant Hede, associate economist. The discussion, as you can see, is in form of presentation, uh, and we'll be having a Q&A session no sooner the presentation ends. Uh, may I request Kavita to begin the PPT? A very good afternoon to all. Once again, I apologize for this delay. Uh, to begin with, the liquidity strain and uh, the resultant funding constraints over the last few months has emerged as one of the challenges to the domestic economy that could pressure growth. In this context, we have examined the Indian banking system liquidity situation in recent times, the factors that have been contributing to the same, the impact of tight liquidity and the various policy measures that have been undertaken to ease the liquidity situation. Also included here are some options that could improve the liquidity situation and our outlook for liquidity for the coming months. To begin with, I will highlight the importance and role of liquidity in the financial system. Liquidity is critical for the functioning of the financial system. Liquidity constraints have historically been a precursor to banking and financial crisis. Lessons from the global financial crisis of 2007 have shown that the liquidity crisis led to the collapse of some of the major banks in the US. Owing to the critical linkages across markets and institutions through the lending and borrowing relationships, shocks in any segment can have a spillover effect across the broader markets and lead to a deterioration in the overall funding conditions. Adequate liquidity in the banking system is needed to preserve the stability of the financial system. Also, constraints on liquidity could have a cascading effect or, and compound other risks such as market and uh, credit risk. A look at the net liquidity in the banking system shows that India's banking system is currently running a liquidity deficit of around 40,000 crore rupees and banks have been borrowing money from the Reserve Bank of India to meet their daily cash requirements since June 2018. Although banking system saw liquidity surplus intermittently, on an overall monthly basis, they have been faced with a liquidity deficit for the last eight months. The net liquidity or cash availability in the system has been in deficit on a sustained basis for over 16 weeks. The net daily banking system liquidity deficit rose to over rupees 1 lakh crores on 29 days during the last five months. It was over rupees 1.5 lakh crores uh, on six days during this period. There has, however, been an easing in the liquidity situation in Jan 2019. Liquidity in the banking system is critical for the overall liquidity conditions in the financial system and has implications for the overall economy. The NBFC fueled tight liquidity situation in the banking system has had an impact on market sentiments, cost of borrowing, fundraising, and consumer spending, to name a few. NBFCs are the largest borrowers in the financial system, and banks are the largest source of funds for NBFCs, followed by mutual funds. Following the default by a key NBFC, banks reduced their lending to the segment. This in turn impacted market sentiments towards NBFCs and raised their cost of borrowing. As can be seen in the table here, the yields of AAA rated bonds for NBFCs and corporates, which is based on the spread over GSEC, has risen across maturities from April 2018. 
the higher cost of funds for MBFCs have pressured their margins and further impinged upon their ability to raise funds. Also, mutual funds which are key lenders to NBFCs have turned cautious and lowered their investments in the segment. The funds raised from the debt market has thus been lower. The total issuances of corporate bonds during April to December 2018 was 19% lower than issuances during the comparable period last year. Consumer spending has seen a decline owing to the lower availability of loans from NBFCs. There has been a decline in sale of automobiles, tractors and consumer goods in recent months and if prolonged, this could impact economic output. Sectors such as auto, housing, real estate financing and SMEs which are dependent on NBFCs for their funds are facing funding constraints which in turn could depress the overall economy's performance. A noteworthy point about the current liquidity situation is that despite the persistent liquidity deficit in the banking system, the weighted average call rate has been by and large below the repo rate, which can be seen as being indicative that the liquidity deficit is not durable or systemic. The RBI also sees this as the system being in equilibrium and it not being an area of concern. Now coming to the factors that have been contributing to the banking system liquidity deficit. The primary reason for the liquidity deficit in the banking system is on account of the growth in deposit inflows being lower than the outflows of credit this year. Some of the other factors that have led to the higher outflow of funds from the banking system are the cash withdrawals by the public to meet festive season demand, outgoes towards tax payment as statutory dues by businesses such as excise, GST and advanced tax payments. Also, the RBI has intervened heavily in the forex market in recent times to stem the decline in the rupee. This impacted liquidity as the RBI was required to buy rupees and convert it into dollars before currency intervention, which increases the cash shortages in the system. The government borrowings and higher demand from importers, especially towards the month end, has also been a factor pressuring banking system liquidity from time to time. I now request Sushant to elaborate on these factors that have contributed to the liquidity tightness in the banking system. We now look at the factors which have constrained liquidity at a granular level. One of the main reasons why the banking system liquidity is pressured is on account of credit growth outpacing deposit growth. The gap between the credit deposit growth rates has widened. The year on year credit growth currently around 15% is almost 6% higher than the deposit growth. This is in contrast to the period prior to November 10, 2017 when deposit growth surpassed credit growth. Also during that period, liquidity in the banking system was largely in surplus. This chart shows both incremental and year-on-year -year offtake in credit and deposits as on 4 January 2019. The incremental credit growth that is from 1 April 2018 to 4 Jan 2019 at 8.3% has outpaced the incremental deposit growth of 5.3%. The credit growth this year has been mainly driven by services and personal loans. Within services, credit to the NBFC sector has been the highest. Another factor pressuring liquidity in the banking system has been the high cash outflows from the banking system owing to seasonal factors 
such as festive demand as well as tax outflows. During the current financial year, the currency in circulation has increased from rupees 18.3 lakh crores as on March 31st, 2018 to rupees 20.3 lakh crores as on 18 Jan 2019. While analyzing the currency in circulation post September, we see that the currency in circulation has increased by 5.4% over the 6.5% growth observed during April to September 18. In the month of November, the currency in circulation had risen to rupees 20.2 lakh crores primarily on account of festivities like Diwali. The month of December had state elections coupled with festival demands, which led to increase in circulation in turn weighed on liquidity. The market borrowings of the government also weighs on liquidity in the banking system with banks and financial institutions being the largest buyers of these securities. It is worth noting here that total government borrowings this year have been lower than the previous year, mainly on account of lower central government borrowings. So far, the central government has borrowed rupees 4.6 lakh crores, which is nearly rupees 1 lakh crore less than the corresponding period last year, while the state government borrowings have been fairly stable at around rupees 3.3 lakh crores. The central government has also been raising funds through the auctions of cash management bills. During this fiscal, the government has raised rupees 1.3 lakh crores which is rupees 20,000 crores lower than the previous year. Even though the government borrowings have been lower this year, it has added to the liquidity pressures in the banking system. Another factor pressuring liquidity has been RBI's foreign exchange intervention to stem the depreciation in the Indian rupee. The central bank has sold dollars in the currency market worth 26.5 billion during April to November 2018. The sharp depreciation in the rupee in October saw the RBI increase its intervention in the forex market by selling dollars worth $7.2 billion. Selling of the US dollars by RBI has in turn led to a decline in the foreign exchange reserves of RBI from $395 billion in April 18 to $371 billion in January 2019. RBI has been monitoring the liquidity situation and has from time to time come up with various measures to manage the banking system liquidity. I have covered these measures here. Liquidity infusion via liquidity adjustment facility, that is repo borrowings. So far this fiscal, that is during April to Jan, RBI has undertaken 92 term repo auctions worth rupees 17 lakh crores, significantly higher than rupees 4.9 lakh crores infused via 81 term repos in the corresponding period previous year. Along with this frictional liquidity infusion, RBI has been constantly undertaking open market operations to infuse durable or permanent liquidity into the banking system. RBI undertakes OMO purchases in which the central bank purchases the central government securities and in turn infuses liquidity into the banking system. So far this fiscal, RBI has infused liquidity on a sustained basis to the tune of rupees 2.27 lakh crores by way of OMO purchases. 
This is in sharp contrast to the previous year when the RBI conducted o OMO sales aggregating rupees 90,000 crores to drain liquidity from the system. Since September 2018, RBI has undertaken OMO purchases worth rupees 1.96 lakh crores. Despite this liquidity infusion via OMO purchases, the overall liquidity in the banking system has been pressured for the 16th consecutive week. RBI has announced that it will undertake OMO purchases worth Rs. 37,500 crores in the month of February. RBI has indicated that they will continue with the OMOs till March 2019. Another measure undertaken by RBI is the relaxation in the statutory liquidity ratio across six quarters commencing Jan 2019. RBI proposed to reduce SLR by 25 bips every calendar quarter until it reaches 18% of the net demand and time liabilities from the earlier 19.5%. The first reduction of 25 bips took effect from 1st Jan 2019. A lower SLR provides more liquidity to the banks for lending. In addition to the above relief to the banks, RBI also notified extension of the transition period from 31st March 2019 to 31st March 2020 for implementing the last tranche of 0.625% of risk weighted assets under the capital conservation buffer. The banks which have been weighed down by huge provisioning for bad loans during the last two years will get one additional year to build the capital buffer of 2.5% above the regulatory minimum capital requirement of 9% of the risk weighted assets. This move would free capital from the banks for lending activities, which otherwise would have had to be used for building the capital buffer. RBI recently also granted relief to two sectors, MSMEs and NBFCs, which going forward could ease liquidity constraints in the banking system. For MSMEs, the RBI allowed a one-time restructuring of existing debt up to Rs 25 crores for those companies which have defaulted on loan repayments. For NBFCs which have stressed on account of liquidity squeeze and have been finding it difficult to make repayments have also benefited from recent RBI moves. Firstly, RBI has told banks to provide partial credit enhancement to bank bonds issued by systematically important non-deposit taking financial companies registered with RBI and HFCs registered with national housing banks. In addition, the government securities equivalent to the incremental credit disbursed by the banks to the NBFCs from October 19th to March 31st, 2019 would be eligible for liquidity coverage ratio of the banks. Banks were also permitted to raise exposure to a single NBFC from 10% to 15% until the end of the financial year. As seen from the recent easing in the liquidity deficit in the banking system, it can be deduced that these measures could have aided the banking system liquidity. To further improve the liquidity situation, RBI can continue introducing various measures. One of that would be to increase the quantum and frequency of repo borrowings under LAF. In addition, 
RBI can continue with its preferred tool of permanent liquidity infusion that is OMO purchases. To have a more durable or permanent liquidity, RBI could reduce the cash reserve ratio from the current level of 4% by 25 bips or 50 bips. Given the current level of net demand and time liabilities of around Rs 128 lakh crores in the banking system, this could release funds into the banking system in the range of Rs 30,000 crores to Rs 65,000 crores. However, RBI believes that a CRR cut is not warranted for as the liquidity concerns at the present level is seen manageable. Another sort of the option by markets is that RBI could open a special liquidity window to NBFCs. However, there has been no indication made by RBI on the same as this could set a precedent for opening such facilities for others. Lastly, our outlook on liquidity. We expect liquidity pressures to prevail till March 2019 with uh, bank credit growth to continue surpassing deposit growth. Also, higher seasonal demand for funds, namely by businesses, to meet year-end payment needs, tax outflows, and the general public to meet uh, wedding season demand could see higher cash withdrawals. Election-related cash outflows could also pressure liquidity. However, the liquidity situation in the banking system would continue to be supported by the RBI by way of appropriate policy measures as and when warranted. The central bank would continue to manage system liquidity with OMOs and repos. Banking system liquidity would stabilize in the early months of the next fiscal year under normal circumstances as the credit deposit gap could narrow as seasonally bank credit offtake slows down in the first few months of the fiscal. This is, however, contingent on normalization of the conditions in the NBFC segment. Also, we do not foresee much distortions on account of government borrowings, which are likely to be retained at the same range of the preceding year. At the same time, there are certain risks that could aggravate the liquidity constraints. One needs to watch out if NBFCs would be able to roll over their debt into the new fiscal year. Also, there could be disturbances on account of elections and currency depreciation. With this, we conclude our uh, presentation. And uh, with, a, uh, with a break of two minutes, after a break of two minutes, we will be taking in questions. Request you to please key in your questions. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back. Uh, I will take in the questions now. We have got a few questions. Uh, one of the questions which we have received from Ms. Aditya Rao is, uh, sorry, it's Aditya Rao. Uh, can you give a rough estimate of the extent to which elections and seasonal factors would affect the liquidity? Having said that, would what would be the effect of the PSBs? Uh, it uh, we may not be able to accurately give you an estimate as to what would be the impact of uh, uh, elections on the cash outflows in the system but what we have seen based on uh, some of uh, the past elections and uh, the currency uh, the cash outflows that uh, a couple of weeks prior to elections uh, there has been uh, an increase in currency in circulation but this time around uh, seasonally it is a uh, period of a uh, high demand for wedding season related uh, fund, uh, cash requirements so it may be may not be able to accurately tell um, you what would be the election re related cash outflows uh, but going forward, uh, in the beginning of next year, we feel that uh, uh, the liquidity constraints could ease given that the credit offtake at the beginning of the year uh, uh, seasonally tends to be lower. Have another question uh, can a rate cut be expected in the next monetary policy as inflation is under control and due to liquidity uh, issues um, we do not uh, expect a rate cut in the coming policy even though there has been a moderation in inflation uh, this is mainly because uh, core inflation still continues to be sticky and uh, that is something which will need to be monitored also there there are uh, pressures uh, which are building on the inflation front which will need to be monitored more closely so with the rbi is likely to do that before deciding on a rate cut There's a question on what is the estimate for a 10 year GSEC yield in a one year for a one year period? We feel that 10 year GSEC yield uh, for the next few months at least would be stable at uh, around 7.3%. Uh, There's a question, could a falling rupee continue to weigh on the liquidity? Uh, we have seen that uh, the rupee depreciation has been one of the factors which has impacted liquidity in the banking system because the RBI was uh, selling uh, uh, dollars to stem the decline in the rupee. Um, it is likely that uh, this could happen again if uh, the rupee depreciates significantly. The RBI would again uh, uh, enter into the markets uh, but through foreign exchange intervention this could in turn impact liquidity The question how is the said liquidity crunch affecting the funding cost for corporate commercial borrowing uh, we have seen that uh, the uh, 
cost of uh, borrowing for corporates uh, has risen uh, since the start of the financial year uh, for triple a uh, rated bonds where we have seen that the spread over g6 uh, has uh, risen uh, significantly in september although there has been a moderation in jan but uh, the costs have seen an increase in recent months There's a question on what is the quantum of OMOs you expect in March, April, and May. Uh, up till uh, March, uh, the, going by the recent trend, uh, the, uh, and again based on the assessment of the liquidity situation, the RBI has been seen to be infusing on a monthly basis around 50,000 crores. Uh, given that uh, the funding requirements towards the end of the year could be higher, we can expect a similar amount uh, for uh, the next month also. However, going uh, uh, forward into the the next financial year it will be difficult to uh, um, estimate what the OMO infusions would be because typically around that time in the first quarter the uh, system liquidity tends to improve because currently what is uh, constraining system liquidity is the higher growth in uh, credit uh, versus the credit gro growth versus deposit uh, inflows and given that at the start of the financial year credit uh, offtake is lower uh, the pressure on liquidity could be lower so based on uh, the prevailing liquidity conditions there the rbi could uh, come in with uh, the omo purchases but at this point in time it would be difficult to give an estimate on the quantum Do you for, there's a question on do you foresee slowdown in lending to SME MSME? Uh, the lending towards this segment would be dependent on their uh, demand for funds, and currently we have been seeing uh, uh, that the SME uh, are uh, the segment is being impacted, and their borrowing requirements have uh, not been adequately met uh, through NBFCs uh, uh, because of the funding constraints there. So they could be uh, looking at alternate sources of uh, funding, mainly from banks, and uh, the uh, regulators have been coming up with measures to promote lending and, and improve the funding for uh, this segment. So going forward, we could see um, the more uh, avenues opening up for them from the bank banking side. There's a question, do you think lending to NBFCs has improved now that they are still facing or are they still facing difficulties to borrow? Uh, the better managed NBFCs are still able to raise uh, funds. It is uh, the, the other NBFCs which have had uh, uh, weakness in their ALMs that uh, have been facing problems uh, in raising funds. Overall, what we have seen is that the uh, debt issuances have been lower this year and this is mainly because of lower issuances by NBFCs.
there's a question on uh, what would be the impact on banking system liquidity from state governments waiving farm loans as part of their political st strategy to lure farmer votes um, any sort of uh, waiver would have uh, an uh, impact uh, on the uh, on the banks concerned but however to have a uh, proper assessment of uh, this you know, we need to know exactly the exact details of these farm loan waivers uh, before uh, analyzing what the actual impact would be and uh, this is yet to come by because a lot of these farm loan waivers are spread over a period of time it is not at one go I think that is the last question taken up for the day because we are running short of time. Uh, we again really ap apologize for the delay in uh, starting of the webinar due to technical issues. Um, uh, any uh, unanswered queries will be happy to reply by individually by mail. Uh, and thank you again for taking your time out and being a part of this Care Ratings webinar. Uh, for any feedback, uh, suggestions, you are please welcome to write to us uh, in the suggestion box which will be coming no sooner the webinar ends. Thank you and goodbye for now.